that was the darkest thing written in 1651. Did you recognize that tune, The Irish Washerwoman? It, in 1651, it was called Dargeson or Sedany. Let's go back to England of 1600. The French minuet was becoming old fashioned and Queen Elizabeth I called for dances from the English countryside. In effect, she defined a courtier as someone with grace and manners who could dance. Before long, English country dance made its way to the courts of France. Spain and Italy, where it was pronounced contredance. From there, it was taken by French speakers to North America and by Spanish speakers to what is now Latin America. George Washington did country dances or contradance. His favorite dance was Sir Roger de Coverley or the Virginia Reel. The formation of the Varil is long ways for as many as will. Why long ways? To express the value of social order, to fit into narrow hallways at a country inn, to allow the host couple to begin greeting other couples as they progress down the hall. Let's look at a long ways dance first published in 1679, Christ Church Bells. It begins with first corner's right hand turn. <laughs>
an english publisher named john playford produced his first edition of the dancing master in nineteen sixteen fifty one and later editions over a sixty seven year period playford collected dancers from unnamed dancing masters early masters lived at court in later years they traveled the countryside spending a week or more in a manor house or community that could afford to hire them let me read you an eighteen oh eight advertisement from the cincinnati inquirer that i found on microfilm at the ohio historical society dancing school mr coleman most respectfully i inform you that the ladies and gentlemen of Cincinnati and its vicinity that I have arrived at this place for the purpose of teaching that fashionable art of dancing to the youth of both sexes and I will open a school for that purpose as soon as a convenient room and a sufficient number of pupils can be procured. I have been a teacher in the above mentioned art for many years and I have with you with me letters of recommendation from gentlemen of respectability who reside in the different towns where I have taught. My terms will not exceed my desserts. Our dan next dance is a triplet, a dance for three sets of couples. This is from 1651 called Grimstock. It begins with partners lead up a double. is a quadrille. Quadrille is French for square. Square dancing probably came to this area from the Appalachian Mountains. How many of you have roots in Appalachia? In the early 1900s, social workers from the East established settlement schools in the Appalachian Highlands. They promoted traditional handicrafts, 
like weaving and quilting as well as social gatherings with music and dance appalachian culture would provide a model for the recreation movement nationally when english ethnomusicologist cecil sharp visited these schools in 1917 he announced his discovery of the roots of english dance as it was done even before the playford publications whether accurate or not what followed was a revival that continues to this day both english country dance and its livelier american cousins square and contra dance let's watch a quadrille from 18 1651 called hyde park it begins head couples forward a double about our costumes. Susan will talk with us about that. Come everyone, show your costumes. As you can see, there's quite a variety of costumes from different time periods, from the 1600s all the way up to the 1800s and from different countries represented, England and also Scotland. And we want to thank our principal seamstress, Cheryl Wirtz. Now let's watch another dance, Noel Park. 
1788. It begins, circle four hands round, first corners change. country dances consist of eight or 16 count figures that dancers work together to create. A pattern of figures fills a 32 bar musical sequence that repeats. So far in our performance you may have noticed some familiar figures. Let's look at some figures for two dancers. Lucinda and Keith will demonstrate Siding, and then right hand turn. Next, they have a back to back figure. Other figures are for four dancers. Wynn and Persis will join Keith and Lucinda and demonstrate circle left and then left hands across and then a little more vigorous slip left now when and keith and lucinda lucinda will show us 
a hay for three. In our next dance, see what figures you can recognize in this lively triplet from 1774. It's called the Fandango. It begins with the top couple turning by the right and casting down. <laughs> declined in England, the land-owning gentry turned to ma manors into parks with assemblies or halls for dancing. The dance you just watched, Knoll Park, was named for such an assembly. Published in 1788, it may well have been danced by Jane Austen. As a single woman of property in a small town, Jane Austen attended country, country dances often and used them as a backdrop in her novels, for example, Pride and Prejudice. Another dance from Jane Austen's time is Duke of Kent's Waltz. As the title suggests, the music is three-quarter time, 
foreshadowing the coming of couple dances like the waltz and the polka in the 1800s. Let's look at Duke of Kent's waltz. It begins with right hands across. And first, we want to thank our sound technician, Pat White. Thank you, Pat. We drafted her at the last minute, and she really knows her technology. So thank you, Pat, and all the families that have helped us. So who are the Madrigal Dancers? We began in 2003 when Bill Alkire trained performers for a church fundraiser. Where are you, Bill? Ah, he's back there on his roll later. Over the years, we have broadened our membership, repertoire, mission, and audience. We are a nonprofit group currently ranging in age from, guess what, 11 to 74. We won't tell you who. <laughs> First, for, let's uh, introduce everybody. First, from Creston, Cheryl, and Terry Wirtz. And Cheryl has been our narrator today and also our costume mistress, putting in many long hours. From Worcester, uh, no, from Lakeville is next, Denera Wallace. 
And Danera, who is your aunt who lives here? My aunt Dorothy lives here, but she had to go down to the nursing home. Okay, aunt Dorothy is here. And from Worcester, we have uh, Susan Hetty. And for his first time dancing with us, Peter Hembry, doing a wonderful job. Keith Spears, Lucinda Sigrist, Chris Smucker, Sky White, his first year dancing, doing a great job. Then we have the Yoder family, Barbara, Wynn, and Persis. And they have someone special. Dan Yoder, and number 13, he's right back there. Say hi, Dan. <laughs> and Tom helps us with music and many things. And I'm Susan English, and I'm just delighted to be here. And thank you, Mindy. We want to thank Mindy. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone here in our audience for coming tonight who made this possible. So um, they're going to go get the maypole. We're going to end up with a maypole dance. And while they're getting the maypole, let's talk about why we dance. It requires cooperation with every person's contribution of equal importance. It is participatory, promoting exercise and a healthy lifestyle. We look pretty good, don't we, for our ages? Being intergenerational, we strive to strengthen families and community. As we connect with each other and the music, we encourage you to join us in celebrating these and other forms of world music. So we're going to end with a maypole dance, and uh, after that, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have and, and meet you all. And again, thank you for hosting the Madrigal Dancers, and we hope we can meet some new people other times through our performances. I'm going to put down my microphone, and then I think we'll begin.
Anything else that you want to talk about? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Does anybody?